My memory of Jack Chantley is when uh, I'd just broken the world record walking Land's End on a groats he got to know about me through a guy called Jack Hatfield and he invited me to go to Middlesbrough Football Club to talk to him and uh, he, uh, he offered sponsorship money, £500 in those days and um, I got to know him and talked to him in his office and talked to him. we were invited him to his home and uh, we, um, before I left for America and I was doing a walk across America in 76 um, I was uh, invited to go and join him at uh, the home game against Derby County and uh, he presented us with these two wonderful track suits which says Middlesbrough uh, Soccer Club 1876-1976 and we walked around the ground at half time and ended up on match of the day. So uh, I, I have a very fond memory of Jack. Jack was born and bred in the town of Ashton, so it's fitting that the funeral cortege is visiting Ashton today before the private family service in Newcastle. And um, you know some of the stories he told me, like when the World Cup, for example, and he saw his brother Bobby in tears, and he went up to Bobby and he said, How, "How's that, Bobby?" He said, "World champions." And Bobby turns around to Jack and he says, "You know, kid," he said, "Our lives will never be the same again." I'm here with Daniel Douglas here, who's got something to show, I believe. Yeah, so um, there's a picture taken with Jack that I had the pleasure of meeting him in uh, late 2012 at a, a football talking dinner. So I took a wonderful opportunity to meet Jack, get my picture taken with him, and uh, more importantly, to sign uh, the official programme from 1966. And over the years, I've been lucky enough to, as well as Jack's signature, is to be add, add five more players to it, so Banks, Roger Hunt, Bobby Charlton, Jeff Hurst, and George Cohn. So after England won the World Cup back in 66 with the help of Jack and brother Bobby, Jack bought his parents a new house with his World Cup winnings of a thousand pounds. It's this house here, Number 8 College Road. Sissy Charlton, Jack's mother, named the house Jules Romay after the World Cup. There's nothing into this house is obviously it's, uh, it's called Jules Romay. It was bought by Jack and Bobby I believe after 66 for, uh, for the mother Sissy. So yeah, it's very very relevant to be here today and it's such a moving tribute to Jack and I'm pleased the streets have been full at Ashton so yeah.
So when you were growing up, what were some of the stories about the World Cup that you heard about? Um, it was just the euphoria of, of England winning the occasion and Jeff Hurst going a hat-trick in the World Cup final has never been seen or achieved before. And obviously being a Newcastle fan in English, we've never won anything since 1966 and it was just the euphoria of that day and that occasion. And obviously my dad um, was born in the 40s. He was a huge Jack Charlton fan. Uh, he liked his style of play. And more importantly, my dad loved Jackie because he was a man of the North East and was not ashamed to, to admit to where he was from. But what is unusual about the Munich air crash, I also know um, and went on holiday with Gene and Jim McGregor. And Jim McGregor was a physio at Manchester United. And they were knocking out some, um, some old fitting rooms, ch uh, changing rooms, or, uh, um, treatment rooms. Jim went in on this Sunday and he saw these big brown envelopes. Right? And he said to the builders, he said, what are these? He said, oh, Ferguson said, just chuck everything away. He said, I'm not chucking those away. I don't know what they are. So he took them away with him. And he was in his wife's car. And he put these, about eight or ten of these um, big brown envelopes under a rug in his wife's car. And his wife was a physiotherapist, right? So three or four days later, she rang him up, Jim, and said, do you know what, what I found in my car? She said, what? He said, well, I'm not going to tell you. He said, you better come home. And it was all the x-rays of all the... <laughs>